In Creo Parametric, you can define the CNC sequences in order to manufacture your parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at a face milling sequence, which I can get to from the mill tab. And here is the face milling command. The face milling command allows you to remove material from the top of your workpiece in order to create a flat surface. In face milling, the tool is oriented horizontally, usually, most of the time. And there's a difference between face milling and what you might know as end milling. With face milling, it's going to use the face of the tool versus end mills, which also use the sides of the tool. Now note that in order to get to the face command, I did a lot of setup work first. I created my NC model. I defined a reference model and a workpiece, a work center. I put in a fixture and also defined an operation. And here we have something called a mill surface. And I'll talk about this more in a second. But before I go into the face mill command, I'm going to make this surface visible. And so to create the face milling sequence, I will click on the face command. And this opens up the dashboard. The first thing that I need to define is the depth and the area that is going to be machined. And you have a few different choices. You could use a model surface, or you could even use a workpiece surface. But in this situation, I'm going to use that mill surface that I just unhid. I covered mill surfaces in a different video. You can check that out. And so I will pick that mill surface that I have created. And this will define the depth in the area to be machined. Note that there is another choice in here for mill windows. I will cover mill windows in a different video, but here we have to find what we actually want to face down in this uh, NC sequence. The next thing that I need to define is what tool that I want to use. So in a previous video, I created some different tools and I'm going to use my flat end mill. You could all even use a radius ball end mill. But now we get this message if I want to update the sequence parameters by copying cutting data from the tool. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to show you some parameters in a moment. And even now you can start to see a preview of the tool path that is going to be generated. If I click on the tool preview button, I can see what that configured tool is going to look like. Then the next big step is our parameters. And parameters, I mean, this is really the heart of getting the tool path that you want. Let me go to the parameters tab. And so here you can see a bunch of different parameters. Some of them are required and have some values already entered for us, and others are optional. And so let's change a few in here. So for example, we've got a value for the cut feed. I'm going to use a value of, let's use 1000. I'm not an expert at manufacturing. So if you're like, hey, why are you choosing those values? Well, kind of just making up some of them in this video. And then we have a step depth in this situation of 2.5. We also have a step over value. This happens to be half the diameter of the tool. And another one to mention our clearance distance. Maybe I want to use a smaller value of five for that. And also let's change our spindle speed. Let's make this 1000. Actually, let me change the cut feed to 100. There we go. Okay, and so these are just some of the parameters that you can configure. To access the full list of parameters, you can click on this icon to edit the manufacturing or machining parameters. Oops, let me go to the basic button. These are the ones that we saw in the tab, but you can also use the all button if you want to see all the different available parameters. There are a lot of them here. Be aware that there's also a drop down list where you can narrow it to a specific category like feeds and speeds, cut depth and allowances, cutting motions, entry and exit motions, machine settings, and general. But let's go to all categories. And at this point, I'm going to break over to a slide deck just for a moment to talk about some of these different parameters. I am not going to read through all the different parameters that you have available to you. I just want to make you aware that you have a lot of them. 
this is something that you should experiment with in order to get the motions that you want. And so here are some of the critical parameters that relate to lateral control. One that I definitely recommend that you investigate is scan type for how sort of like the shape of the motion is going to look. But we got some other ones like cut angle, step over, step over adjust, number of passes, one pass offset, initial edge offset, and final edge offset. Then we have some parameters that are critical to your depth control. You can specify the step depth or the number of cuts. And the, if there is a conflict between the step depth and the number of cuts, then it's going to use the smallest depth of cut based on those two different parameters. And also there's one for the allowance you want on the bottom of the stock. The default is zero. In other words, it will go right to whatever depth reference that you gave when you set up the sequence, but you can add some allowance if you want to leave some material on. And lastly, in terms of parameters, there are a bunch for entry and exit, like your start over travel, end over travel, your approach distance, your exit distance, and how you want to measure the entry edge and the clearance edge. So let's go back over to Creo Parametric. All right, I am not going to change any of the different parameters out of this dialog box, so I'll just hit the cancel button. Now we're back on the parameters tab, and there are a bunch of other different tabs in here in order to configure your CNC sequence. For example, if we go to the clearance tab, we can control the clearance. So for example, right now it's using the value of 50 that I set up in a another video, but you also have the ability to control things like your start and your endpoints. Let's go to the options tab. And so for the options tab, you can choose the entry point if you want to define that. You can also define an approach axis and an exit axis for the vertical motion. And so let's also go, we have our tool motions where you can add an additional customized tool motions. And there's a process tab. If you're going to use pro process for manufacturing, you can specify, you can either calculate the time or specify an actual time. And the properties tab, well, this is mainly a place where you can change the name of the feature. You can do that in the model tree, of course, or add a comment to this uh, as well. Let's take a look at some of the other different controls that we have in here. I'm gonna go back to the reference tab. Uh, so here we have a button where we can show our cutter location data or CL data in another window. And so here you can see the cutter location data that would be later processed into what your machine can understand. Let me close this dialog box. And we also have the ability to play a simulation of the material removal. And so this button allows us to display the tool path in the window. Oh, let me turn my tool preview back on. But from the drop down list, there are some other additional controls. And the last one here is to display the cutting tool motion as it removes material from the workpiece. I'm gonna click on that. And it's going to take us into a material removal simulation mode. Right now, the precision is set to low. If you try to bump that up, you're going to get a warning that changing the precision will reset the simulation. Do you want to proceed? I will click the OK button. And this can take a moment to process depending on the complexity. There are a bunch of other different settings in here, but if you want to see the material removal, you can play the simulation. And so here we have the play simulation dialog box. I'm going to crank down the display speed a lot. So it goes a lot slower than it would normally. And then hit the play button. And so here you can see the simulation of the motion in the model. And if you take a look at this and you don't like the motion, well, then what you want to do is get out of here and go back to your parameters and adjust that in some of the other different settings from the various tabs until you get what you want. But I'm happy with this. I'm going to close the play simulation dialog box. I'm going to close out of the material removal tab. Let me zoom back out. And again, I always like to see the preview of the tool. 
So I'm happy with the face milling sequence that I have configured here. So I'm going to hit the check mark. And now we have our face milling sequence. Let me hide this. And we can go about creating other different sequences in our model, things like our volume milling or roughing and re-roughing, finishing, and so on.